there are a lot of different ways that you can use reverb in your mixes, but how should you be using it on your vocals? Well, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through every vocal reverb trick that you need to know. What's up, everyone? You're watching Roy Thompson Audio. The most basic reverb technique is setting the dry, wet blend or the mix. This is how much reverb there is versus the original vocal. And it sounds silly, but getting this right is crucial. Let's talk about reverb. Let's talk about reverb. Let's talk about reverb. Setting the reverb more dry is gonna keep the vocal up front and forward in the mix. Setting the reverb more wet is gonna push it back in the mix and almost mellow it out. Not every track needs the same amount of reverb. Think about your main vocals versus your background vocals. What do you want to be forward and what do you want to be set back? And not every part of the song needs the same amount of reverb either. You can really define the verses from the choruses by simply changing the reverb level. Next up is setting the decay time. This is how long the reverb is going to ring out. Let's talk about reverb. Let's talk about reverb. Let's talk about Reverb! Shorter decay times, like 100 milliseconds to 500 milliseconds, are gonna sound more natural and more real, like an average room. While longer decays, like 500 milliseconds or more, are gonna sound more lush, more like an effect, like you're in a very large room. I like to use short decay times to give the vocal a little bit of energy and feel less stale. Even if it's not a heavy blend, it just sounds nicer than a completely dead microphone that was recorded in a closet or a bedroom and there's absolutely no room sound. Then I'll use longer decays to help fill space in slower sections or slower songs to create ambiance or just to create an effect like a reverb throw. Think about using different decay settings for different sections of the song. The verse could have a shorter decay and the chorus could have a longer decay. This is gonna create excitement and dynamics throughout your song. Next up is one of the most largely overlooked settings, the pre-delay. This literally delays the time that the reverb comes in. You hear the dry vocal come in, and then a few milliseconds later, you hear the reverb. And it really changes how we perceive the effect. Take a listen for how much bigger the reverb sounds as we increase the pre-delay, even though we're using all of the same settings otherwise. Let's talk about reverb. Let's talk about reverb. Let's talk about reverb. Let's talk about reverb. No pre-delay is gonna keep the effect more subtle because the dry and wet signals begin at the same time. Short pre-delays like 10 to 50 milliseconds are gonna separate the wet and dry signals just enough to add a little clarity to each. Longer pre-delays like 50 milliseconds or more are gonna over-exaggerate the reverb and it'll even sound like the vocal is slapping back at you like an echo. Another overlooked setting is adding EQ. Now some reverbs will have a built-in EQ, some won't. Either way, I find it easier to add my favorite EQ after the reverb plugin to further tailor the sound and help it blend in to the mix. Here are three really easy EQs that you can apply. Add a high pass filter to take out the lows and feature more of the bright and airy high end of the reverb. Plus that'll clean up rumble and mud and leave more space for the bass or guitar in your mix. Let's talk about reverb. Let's talk about reverb or try a low pass filter to remove some of the highs and darken the reverb's tone so it sinks into the track more subtly. Let's talk about reverb. Let's talk about reverb. Or you could use both high pass and low pass together to create the Abbey Road trick and focus your reverb's tone more narrowly. Let's talk about reverb. Let's talk about Reverb! Of course, you can add any additional EQ you like as well. Sometimes you will have to rebalance the reverb's character to suit the mix. And here's a bonus tip for you. If you like a brighter reverb sound, but you find it to be too sparkly on sibilant sounds, try adding a de -esser before the reverb plugin to help smooth out those S's. Let's talk about, let's talk about, let's talk about, Let's talk about... Now, you may be wondering, Roy, those are all great tips, but what type of reverb should I be using? And there are a lot of options, whether it's a hall, a room, a church, a plate, even a spring reverb, but I would not obsess over what brand 
what emulation, or even what type of reverb you're using, because the decay time and the pre-delay time alone are the most impactful settings. That timing aspect really is reverb. That's going to be the biggest factor in the overall ambiance of the effect. But for good measure, let's listen to a few different types of reverbs here, all with similar decay times. Let's talk about reverb. 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 If you're looking for more vocal production tips, check out my free guide, Six Steps to Stellar Vocal Tracks. The link is in the description of this video. Anytime you're working on vocals, you're gonna wanna consider these six steps. It's a free download, so check that out. My name is Roy, and thank you for watching.